look at this. We just woke up and there's snow on the ground. And in the trees, what happened? We had to document this because it's gonna rain later today and wash all of this away. It is Friday, by the way. No, it's not. Oh, it's only Thursday. Scratch that. It's Thursday. <laughs> I get my days mixed up. It's Thursday, by the way. <laughs> This is funny, there's only like snow in this stretch of the driveway. Like down there it's all melted and then it just goes down this stretch. And over here, there's no snow. So on this dreary, somewhat cold day, we're on our way to Walmart. We're gonna get some breakfast at uh, Dunkin' Donuts and then we need some stuff. Odds and ends. Odds and ends and a few groceries to get us to the end of the week because we're going away for the weekend. Yeah, we're going to uh, Bangor for the weekend. Yay! Yay! To the Comic Con! Ben is trying to feel out Sebastian, the only one that we're missing from Series 1. Check this out, there's all these empty shelves. This is, that's Ben's coffee by the way, it's not somebody else's. This is the Shopkin section. Nothing here except for a couple stray blind baskets. Crazy. Bunga bunga! Bunga bunga! <laughs> <laughs> bunga bunga. Bunga bunga. <laughs> How's the Sebastian search going? I'm trying to figure out what this one is. <laughs> you know, they're not clear cut. Okay, Ben claims this already had a hole in the bottom. It did. How could I have popped that myself? But I see purple, so I think, I think it's Sebastian. So stay tuned. We'll uh, check it out in the car. Yeah. Do you want to hold on to that? There's some new Littlest Pet Shops we hadn't seen before over yeah. there. There's this cat on a kayak. The, um, the Pets in the City stuff that we saw at Toy Fair. I haven't seen this out in the stores yet. There's also... These are the City Rides collection. These yeah. two. These are cool. I love these. I love this one because we like to kayak. So I kind of feel like a personal connection to this toy. And some of the ones down here, I don't know how old they are, but we hadn't seen them like this uh, ram. That's not a ram, it's a buffalo, right? Yeah, that's a buffalo. And there's also, um, on the other side, there's a... <laughs> it's like the littlest pet shop, Timon and Pumbaa. I know, that's awesome. <laughs> Don't forget your coffee. Oh! Oh, goodness. Oh, and I have to put all these back. Look I got all excited about finding Sebastian. I forgot to pick up after yeah, myself. Yeah, always pick up your mask. She almost left her coffee behind, too. I know, and then I would, I would have been one of those people that I complain about. Okay. The pony section is very well organized today, but there's nothing new, unfortunately. Okay. All right, next stop. You, you hit the screen again. One more time. One more time. <laughs> Check out the large BB-8 Star Wars display. How cool is this? Yeah, you see BB-8? <laughs> He's still the movies. Yeah. We have to get our copy. We obviously have to get our copy still. So we'll do that. Oh. <laughs> so we're back in the car and Ben seems pretty confident that that is Sebastian after she uh, snuck a peek. Well, I thought it was him and then I noticed it was open. So he keeps giving me the smirk. I did not open this. Let's see what we have in here. Is it Sebastian? Is our series one set complete? Yay! You can't really see him. There he is. There's Sebastian. Oh, here we go. That's a better look. Na 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 Woohoo! Tegan's been putting all his toys into this cat tree. Look, it's like stuff full. Like coloring pages. No cat's gonna fit in here. There's like a balloon and train. He's picking up the living room. I approve. <laughs> Whatever works, right? That's right. Hey, look how clean this floor looks now. We have everything is in the cat tree. It's like, look, it's like stacked up right here. That's not a two, this isn't like two layers. The cat can crawl on the top and crawl out the bottom, but the toys are so high, they're up to here. I don't think that'll fit, bud. 
Now you want to get into the toy box to stuff more toys in here. Tegan, you have a you have a you have a train by your books. Yeah, there's some stuff right there. So we bought Star Wars The Force Awakens at Walmart this morning. It's been out for a couple days, but we had to buy it in the Walmart exclusive packaging. Only at Walmart, exclusive packaging plus Star Wars Galactic Connections trading disc. <laughs> so yeah, that was what looked a little 3D, but you can actually unhinge it? What am I looking for? It snaps open. So it has this picture of BB-8 on the front. And it snaps open. To reveal the rest of the cast. How cool is that? Okay, now let's do something that hasn't been on the internet in a while. A Blu-ray unboxing. <laughs> Once you get the Walmart slip cover off, that's the normal cover. But inside, it feels a little chunkier because that collector's disc is in there. It's heavy. We weren't prepared. I don't have scissors. I'm going to get you a knife. I got it. Now, I believe the Connexions disc are the ones they were giving away on Forest Friday, but you can also find in the trading card aisle. Yeah. But let's find out what one we got. Here it comes, guys. So I don't know if it's the same in every Walmart pack, but we got Anakin Skywalker. Mm -hmm. And we have to keep all these because we are gonna we're gonna decorate a table with these things someday. <laughs> De decorate something with them someday. <laughs> they remind us of like bathroom tiles. Yeah. Are we gonna open this one or just admire it in the package? We can open it. Then we can put it with the others that we have. And look, they actually put artwork on the discs. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. They haven't done that in a while. So this is the DVD, and that is the Blu-ray. There is the checklist, the rare ones down there. Only at Walmart. So here's our disc Anakin, out of the package. Who's not even in the new movie. No. But it says Star Wars, not Force Awakens. True. So. So if you bought it at Walmart, is the disc the same in every pack? Let us know, we're curious. Look at all those bonus features, can't wait to watch this later on. Look, they even put Luke on the back and he's only in the movie for like three seconds. <laughs> well the whole movie is like gearing up to see him. That's true. He's the focus of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> And we have another unboxing here to do today. It's all unboxings here on the vlog <laughs> channel today. I got my um, D23 Renewal kit. Is that just paper? Yeah, I think this is just packing paper. Okay. It seemed heavy, so I wanted to make sure there was nothing packed in it. Okay. So this is my new gold membership package. I've been a charter member since they started D23. This is from the office of Walt Disney, like reproductions. Don't mind the light reflecting. Yeah, I'm this. trying to, you know. There we go. It looks like a nice, like, leather bound book, but it's like just a cardboard, cardboard box. box. All right, so let's open this up. From the office of Walt Disney. Is all this stuff in there? It's like a breakdown of everything in the box. I don't know. We have an envelope. Nothing in the envelope, there's just the envelope. I think it must be a recreation of his early... Stationery? You know, yeah, Walt Disney cartoon of stationery. That's kind of neat. And then we have a... Laughogram card. Like, a, these are all reproductions of, like, artifacts from the mm -hmm. Disney vault. So that would be, like, his original business card. We have an Oswald poster recreation, like the pencil artwork. That's very cool. Oh, like a Western Union telegram. 
So this is from Walt to his brother Roy saying, leaving tonight, stopping over in Kansas City, arrive home Sunday morning, 7.30, don't worry, everything okay, we'll give details when arrive. So let's see, what's the story behind this? Following the devastating loss of Oswald to his distributor, Walt cryptically wires his brother that all is well. Ever the optimist, Walt plans his next act, and the mouse who will be its headliner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's like a little brief summary of all the artifacts in this box, so that's cool. So here's more, some more stationery. Mickey's, Mickey's on this one. <laughs> that's uh, circa 1930 stationery. Next up should be Minnie's Yoo-Hoo sheet music from 1930. There we go. The theme song. And there we go. There's the sheet music. Next up from 1931 should be Walt and Lillian Disney Christmas card. At three years old, Mickey Mouse is a global celebrity and his creator's name is a household word. Walt and his wife Lillian send this greeting card to friends and acquaintances anticipating a tradition of studio holiday cards. Okay, so next up it says, from 1932, a Silly Symphony's film industry trade ad. Radio broadcast publicity photograph from 1938. There's Walt reading something. For immediate release. So this is the Disney Staff Handbook Organizational Chart from 1943. At his bustling new studio in Burbank, Walt's creative team expands. New arrivals learn that the friendly atmosphere originates from the famous boss who insists on being addressed by his first name. This is quite the interesting flow chart. I don't think I could follow that. <laughs> Memory book sketch of Mickey Mouse by Walt Disney, 1944. Ben, do you think you could draw a better Mickey than Walt Disney? No. You don't think you could even do one like that? I might be able to do one like that. <laughs> All sorts of little things in here. So what is it? It looks like a dry cleaning receipt. It does. It's actually a receipt from the Bassett L Loki? Loke? I don't know. Train Shop, London, 1949. Miniature railroad enthusiast Walt Disney Esquire eyes an engine for his backyard layout. As does designer Harper Goff. Walt gets his train, but Harper gets a job that will make him a Disney legend. There you go. So when Walt bought his backyard train. Mm. Interesting. This is the Walt Disney fan card from 1954. The studio fan mail department receives mail for all Disney personalities, particularly Walt himself. Special fan cards are sent in reply, including this portrait of Walt with a collection of characters drawn by artist Bob Moore. We need to get like a painting of us done like that with our cast of characters behind us, you know, like Creepy mm -hmm. Teddy mm. and Granny. What do you think? Mm, yeah. <laughs> I... All right, so. Hmm. Mickey Walt's Mouse notes Club. on the Mickey Mouse Club, 1954. To fund his theme park plans, Walt agrees to produce both a weekly anthology and a daily children's TV series for ABC. The groundbreaking Mickey Mouse Club features a talent showcase, history, current events, and naturally, Disneyland fun. So this is like his brainstorming mm -hmm. for the Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah. There you go. Invitation to the 30th wedding anniversary party, 1955. We're moving through the years. July 13th. <laughs> these are, uh, these very similar to Disneyland sign signs. With the little fingers, like, go that way. Go that way. <laughs> well, he had it at Disneyland. Oh, well, I guess that would Where make there's sense. plenty of room. <laughs> I guess that would make sense. I didn't read it. I just saw the sign. <laughs> well, it would make sense that it would be at Disneyland as well. I mean... <laughs> yeah, you're not going to say, no, like, the boss can't have his 30th yeah. wedding anniversary. You're like, mm, well, I don't know where we could rent to have our anniversary party. It's not like I don't have a ginormous theme park or anything. So this is <laughs> Disneyland Invitational Press Preview Pass for 1955. Wait, I think we uh, skipped ahead. Oh, this was the next one on top. This is the Mary Poppins one. This is the this is the Invitational Press Pass. We Here skipped we ahead a little bit. It we'll, was we'll out of. It was not my fault. I wonder. We should. Uh, 
like flash at at the Disneyland gates. Yeah, we'll be like, we're coming we're, in. Yeah, we're coming in. July 17th. <laughs> it's just a few decades off. <laughs> All right. Can I open this one now? Let's see. No, next up is the uh, inter-office memo from Walt to Ward Kimball, 1955. Dear I'm, Ward. <laughs> I'm sure people are so riveted by this, but this is awesome stuff for me. Dear Ward, thought you might like to be an honorary vice president of the Santa Fe and Disneyland Railroad. Your pass to ride the train at Disneyland <laughs> is enclosed. This also entitles you to a ride in the cabs of any of the locomotives. <laughs> wow. Pretty, I sweet, want one of pretty these. sweet for Ward. I want I want one of those. Okay, next up. Next up is uh, Walt Disney's autograph 1958. You get all you got get all mixed around. We started off good. Oops. It doesn't look like, like Walt's uh, famous no, autograph. No, it does not. Is this the right paper? <laughs> oh, look, Walt is increasing Walt is increasingly recognized while roaming Disneyland to avoid gathering crowds. He carries pre-signed autographs in his pockets and quickly hands one to any autograph seeker. Didn't he do that in, like, Tom Hanks' Walt Disney? Yeah, he did. He did. Saving Mr. Banks, he just whips it out of his pocket. That doesn't look anything like, you know, the Walt Disney signature. Maybe the one that they use for Walt Disney Company is actually Lily's, Lillian's. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, it's a small world note card. That must be that. Yeah, this must be it. Yep, it is literally a note card. It's a small world after Okay, all. here we go. Number 20. The 20th thing in this <laughs> box is the Mary Poppins okay. Gatefold promotional piece from 1964. Walt seeks the rights to P.L. Travers' enchanting stories for decades and is rewarded with the biggest night in his cinematic career. Nice. They put a lot of effort into recreating all this stuff. Yeah, they did. Okay, what's next? Next up is Postcard of Walt's Plane, circa 1964. Those do not look like very comfortable seats. It looks like patio furniture. It does, but I think it, it's cloth. It's just that yeah, design. Yeah. Next up is the Walt Disney Productions Visitor Pass. Okay. Circa 1966. Look, and it's left blank. We could totally fill nice. that out. We could write... Look, even the date is blank, so we could go Mr. John and Mrs. Ben on the date shown. <laughs> You think that would fly at the security uh, But there's desk? no authorized buy. Uh, well, we could We could just, write we, we'll take this <laughs> Walt signature over here, his signature card, and trace it. There we go. Okay. Oh, look, you have the map. Nice. Well, that's how it looked in 1964. Yeah. Or 1966, rather. Nice. Snow White Boulevard. Dopey Drive. <laughs> And last but not least, we have Walt's notes on Epcot, the film script, 1966. Walt annotates writer Marty Scholar's first script, introducing the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Disney executive Card Walker will see both the film and the Epcot project through to completion. So it's like what Walt would say on film. Hey. Mm. Well, we put everything back. Put it and back in order so we can follow the uh, well, guide. Well, these things are so tiny that they're going to shift around no matter what. And there's my new gold card, which looks exactly like the gold card from last year. Yeah. I was hoping they'd switch up the design again. And I think last year was the first year they did this design. Well, I think they have the same design two years in a row. Until they run out. <laughs> I think they do it until they run out of one design. Oh, could be. And... We did an unboxing and a reboxing. Yeah, we are talented. Hashtag reboxing. <laughs> a reboxing video. From the office of Walt Disney, we'll see you tomorrow.